Guys, we are dying to see the dogs. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see their reaction. <laughs> Here we are. Oh my gosh, guys. Here it is. Oh. Hey guys, welcome to my daily vlogs. Please subscribe. Hey guys, yes. How are you? We're home. We're home. Yes. Hi guys. Did you behave? Hey. Yes, we're back. <laughs> we missed you. <laughs> yes, we missed you so much. Oh my gosh, they are so excited. <laughs> hey. Oh my gosh. We missed you so much. Yes. Yes, we Oh my gosh, they are so happy. Salamat ate. Good morning, Mabuhay Squad. Ah, oh, you know what? It feels like forever that we've been able to do this. But finally able to add a magnet to the fridge. Adding bakolod right there. <laughs> right next to Alaminos Pangasinan and under Puerto Galera. Man, we I, I miss traveling, but Bacolod was certainly an adventure, wasn't it guys? Now guys, we got some catching up to do here, so let's hear a positive affirmation for June. Oh, okay, so here's the calendar. I offer gratitude and appreciation to everyone in my life. My gratitude is another expression of love. Giving and receiving love is so easy when I relax and just allow it to flow. All right. I know this is a glorious month to experience, and it begins today. Ooh. Today, success comes to me in unexpected and wonderful ways. Awesome. I take the time to breathe deeply each day, allowing my body to relax and release tension, fear, and criticism. My burdens are light, like feathers in the wind. Ooh, I love that. And finally, for Saturday, June the 5th, I do not struggle alone in the wilderness of life. Whenever I need help, I ask. There you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's positive affirmation. All right, guys. So, um, as some of you may know, we just got back to Manila from Bacolod City. Amazing city. Um, and lots of food, a lot of great people. Um, it was just a really great trip. But, you know, if you watched the vlog from two days ago when we were in Bacolod, we visited this place called the Negros Forest Park. Um, and it's uh, an ecological and conservation park where they're breeding endemic endangered animals and then like incorporating, integrating them into a program which prepares them for release or re-establishment of these populations of endangered wild animals. It was mind-blowing guys. Go watch that vlog after this vlog. It was just incredible. All kinds of birds, reptiles, pigs, <gasps> even like leopard cats, which I had no idea we had monkeys etc but yeah it was just really really amazing and very inspiring and super educational now that vlog was jam-packed with info right but believe it or not when the cameras were off I was busy grilling Kuya Kim the <laughs> the biologist um, at the park I'm asking him a ton of questions because as some of you may know it's what I've been dying to do like super passionate about helping with conservation uh, for those of you who are part of the Ants Canada channel, you already know I've got projects in the works for reforestation and preserving of natural habitat. So, well, for the endemic wildlife. Um, but I'd like to extend that further. For example, our Iloilo property has 33 hectares. That's a lot of land and um, some of it is for farming um, and to help empower and give work to the community of farmers there. So that's that portion of the land. But there is tons and tons of land that we could use to help with conservation. So definitely want to keep some wild spaces, help reforest a part of it. But I was also thinking of possibly helping to build, you know, a facility to, who knows, help breed some spotted deer, which we also saw um, at that uh, eco park in Bacolod. Who knows, there's just so many things 
things we could do. And I was speaking to the vet there, Doc Monica, and uh, to Kuya Kim, and they said that, yeah, they actually run out of facilities when they, you know, breed these animals or these animals come in. So, you know, I offered our farm as a possible uh, space for them to expand their uh, facility or to partner with uh, me and RJ to help with their efforts there. And Ilo Ilo, where our farm is, and Bacolod are very close. They're in like the same region of the Philippines. So that would be easy to transport animals back and forth. So another thing I learned talking to them was the way it works is when these animals come in, they breed them. Then these n babies are raised by the parents as natural as, na as natural as possible. And then when they're adults, they get shipped to another facility, which is basically a larger uh, enclosure or conservation park, a much more open space. And then later on, they are introduced for release somewhere else. So um, I was just amazed, guys, at the process of how these animals are reestablished. And also amazed at how many animals are endangered here in the Philippines. But one of my main focuses at the moment, before helping with breeding deer or like pigs, I would like to help with breeding endangered birds. Because as some of you may know, in our future house uh, at the Mabu High Squad Farm, we've built right in the middle a three-story aviary. It's four meters by five meters by like, I don't know, three stories tall, um, which is a big aviary. And I learned from the folks there at uh, Negros Forest Park that that's a big space for an aviary. It's, it's almost three times some of the sizes of their aviaries. Um, and so it can definitely house some endemic endangered birds. Um, I know a lot of you Mabuhay Squad are from the bird community. You guys understand how exciting this is. Um, but I also understand that this is not like keeping pet birds. Um, that, you know, helping with conservation and establishing endangered birds is a totally different thing. You know, we really gotta be on top of allowing the birds to raise their own babies and us humans not hand feeding them like we would a parrot right um minimizing contact that kind of thing um but anyways i have sent out my messages to some of my friends to uh hopefully get in touch with denr which is the department of environment and natural resources here in the philippines uh so i could start the wheels going um propose our aviary as a possible place for you know to partner with the government on establishing birds I would like to get their advice as well. I'm in touch with the people at uh, Negros Forest Park as well. So, you know, I can start the learning process of how I can help with the conservation of these endangered birds. At the moment, I am now thinking uh, possibly some hornbills um, along with some endemic pigeons and then possibly smaller parrots like the hanging parrots. Not sure yet, um, but that is in my mind. I think that would work. Kuya Kim said that we had enough space for eagles now I don't think we could take on raptors at the moment if we do take on eagles then the entire aviary would have to be dedicated to just the eagles N no other birds can be inside um, because they would they would be eaten um, and we would need a steady supply of like mice and all of that or chicken chicks I'm not sure what they eat but that sounds a little too involved <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for that. Um, and then plus we have little tiny dogs, which I'm afraid would become food for the eagles if we ever own some. So I'm not sure if I'm willing to do that. And plus my experience is with parrots. So I, I do feel like hornbills, small hanging parrots and pigeons would be the more along the lines of my experience base. Now I'm in the research phase at the moment. And when I research things, I go full in. I'm already talking again to the team at Negros Forest park our aviary would have to be designed for these birds so I was studying some of their aviaries and it does seem that the birds had nesting boxes so we would need to build nesting boxes for the aviary which I'm thinking would be hung somewhere and the nesting boxes would have to be at a certain level I guess like I have to find out how high hornbills build their nests. Like, should we put the nesting boxes of the hornbills 
all the way at the third story? And if so, there needs to be a way for me to get up there just in case I need to. So these are things I need to talk to architect about. Like, will we be able to use a three-story ladder? Or can we build some kind of climbing rings, you know, so I can get up there? I don't know. These are things that I'm thinking about now. Um, but it is very exciting and I can't wait to help. Help Mother Nature out, right guys? Because a lot of these animals have lost their habitat. They're being hunted for the pet industry. Um, they're being killed for whatever reason. And um, I want to help undo that. What do you guys think of all this? Huh? It's a pretty big venture, I, I would say. Um, and from what I've learned, the conservation community here in the Philippines is not very big. Which is surprising because the Philippines is so rich in animal biodiversity, not only on land, but also in our oceans. So I figured the conservation community would be much larger, um, but apparently it's not. But maybe it's just because the advocacy needs more promotion. I don't know, but we hope to help with that. Um, again, I would love to offer our spaces, our properties uh, to help with reestablishment of these um, endemic endangered animals. Um, and you know, the aviary in our house was built for Ligaya, our late African grey parrot who passed away last year. And I feel like Ligaya would be happy that we're helping other birds through the home that was supposed to be hers. I like to imagine that in my mind anyway. And guys, I also realized that I have about less than three weeks left in my 30s. Later this month, I'll be turning 40. And I mean, age is just a number, yes, but I find every decade was its own chapter, personally. That's what, that's what I've noticed. Tell me if you guys have noticed something similar in your life. So obviously zero to 10, that was just growing up. That, that was like a growing up phase. But then um, the teenage years, 10 to about 20, that was also growing up, but that was like education, more education, nothing really. Um, and finding out what I was passionate about. And then my 20s was all about my music career, like my music passions. I dedicated most of my 20s to music. So in my early 20s, I tried out for Canadian Idol and was a finalist, um, which started this whole like journey in the music industry where I performed a lot, um, I recorded two albums, got a gold record through the Canadian Idol album as well. OMG, like a gold record, seriously? Didn't expect that. Um, I was able to open for the Pussycat Dolls, um, here in the Philippines actually, uh, when they toured here. Flew from Canada just to perform for that concert. And then um, the following year for Christina Aguilera. So yeah, my 20s was all about music. It was awesome. And then come 30 onwards, that was dominated by the internet. <laughs> I first went viral on YouTube in when I was about 30, I, I believe. And of course, that opened a whole other chapter, like, till this day. My entire 30s was just dominated by my work online, on social media, as, you know, a Filipino comedian, and also for Ants Canada, built, establishing the Ants Canada Ant Store and the Ants Canada channel. But I've been thinking, as I race towards the 40, age 40 point, um, what's next? What will my 40s hold? Like, I, I, I feel like there's still lots to do that personally I would like for there to be a ton more, for it to be adventurous, just as adventurous as my 20s and just as fun and adventurous as my 30s were. Personally, I'm hoping the 40s is just as mind-blowing and my impact in the world is greater. I feel like with each decade, my ability to impact the world has been greater. So I'm hoping the best is yet to come in my 40s. And I've been wondering, what is my next thing? And I've been thinking, I'm hoping it involves maybe this conservation project. Maybe my 40s will be dedicated to helping with conservation of wildlife. Maybe I'll be immersed in that. Or I don't know. It's just, it's kind of an open book and it, it's exciting. Um, life, tell me what I can't wait to discover what you have for the 40s, for these 40s years. Now, I've said this in a previous vlog, but there are many examples of people who did their greatest work in their 40s. For example, Ellen DeGeneres. Um, Ellen started her show when she was 45, her mid 40s. Ellen thought she wasn't hireable anymore. She was 45, which is, I guess, considered old in show business. And she didn't believe that she would do well as a talk show host. Um, but turns 
out she had a long almost 20 year career doing her show which arguably is her biggest accomplishment I think um, and that was all done in her 40s and 50s so um, yeah I'm thinking about oh what is ahead and I'm hoping my impact in the world can be greater in these 40s Anyways, all of you guys who have passed the 40 mark, are the 40s just as cool as everyone says they are? Let me know in the comments. I am not ready to settle down. No, no, no. I, I, I feel like I've just gotten started. I wanna do bigger things, more important things. Impact more lives in the world somehow. Life, use me, please. Use my talents and resources to do your good work. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm weird. Sykes, we have a surprise for you yeah. and Sahara, yes, we have a surprise for you guys. Guess Tomorrow. what? Tomorrow we're going somewhere yeah. and we're not coming home for a few days. Ooh. Wanna know where we're going, guys? Hmm? Sykes, Sahara, we are going to 